A couple of months ago, it was announced that Professor Nick Benadol, head of the Gordon Institute of Business Science, is to step down from his role as dean. He is one of the founding members of Gibbs, which has become an internationally accredited and respected business school. I have the man himself in studio to tell us about the process of building Gibbs and where to next. Thanks very much for joining it's us. It's a Professor. pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. Okay, now. Um, you, along with others, established Gibbs some 14 years ago. Clearly, there must have been an, a gap in the market for these types of institutions. Well, we weren't sure there was, actually. Some people didn't think there was a gap because they were well-established business schools. And South Africa has a long tradition of business schools. But we thought there was, and I spent a lot of time having many cups of tea with CEOs, asking them how they saw, at the time, this was 1999, the 21st century and the challenges business would face. And we took from those lessons some insights which really helped us start the school. So what sort of challenges did you go through to found uh, an organization like Gibbs and make it the internationally accredited and recognized organization it is today? Well, we had a lot of support from the University of Pretoria, uh, financial and otherwise, and of course Mr. Donald Gordon made a major donation to help us get going. So that gave us a good base from which to start and we built a beautiful campus uh, in Santon, uh, as you may know. So there were many challenges, of course. I had a, a sheet of paper, not too many colleagues, and we had to get going. Um, there were challenges in getting going, as I say, because there were other schools around, but we tried to find a different angle and to be close to business practice. We also went around the world looking at the best practice at the time and drew on those lessons as well. I think our motto is uh, learn from everyone and copy no one. So we had to have a, an angle that was right for South Africa as best we could make it at the time. Now, we know that MBAs are not cheap to do. Um, and given the South African context, to what extent do you think um, access to MBAs for the previously disadvantaged has actually occurred? Well, that's a good question. I mean, there are many different uh, business schools in South Africa. In fact, there's significant provision. There needs to be more because we face a very big managerial challenge in the years ahead. If we look at our numbers, increasingly they reflect the demography of the country, uh, but that will continue to grow over time as well. Incidentally, we have a very strong presence of women on our MBA, one of the highest amongst good uh, programs in the world, actually. So we think access is coming nicely, and, and in our case, most of these executives are chosen by their companies and, and very often supported by their company to do the MBA. So they're people in their 30s are on a fast track and wish to access the kind of general management knowledge that it takes to run a business. In terms of the kind of MBA graduate that is uh, churned out by uh, South African MBA schools. How do they fare relative to international graduates? Oh, they do pretty well, in fact. Um, m most of them would report an increase of income over time. Uh, we just benchmarked, in fact, another uh, today the Financial Times was looking at the, at the numbers. Our MBAs do earn well. I think partly because of the history of the country, there's a shortage of keen talent who are ambitious and hardworking, and we hope to provide access, not just on the MBA, by the way. That's always a degree that gets all the attention, but there are many other programs that we offer either to companies or to people in certificate or diploma programs. Every so often, there's a debate that rages about why an MBA, why is it, you know, what sets an MBA graduate apart from somebody who's got a regular master's? What does? Well, I think the focus of business schools for the last hundred years has been around the idea of, of how to run an, a whole organization. Most executives work their way up in a functional role. They're in sales or they're in operations or accounting, and they want to broaden it into running the whole organization, understanding the, how economics affects it, operations affects HR, etc. So I think the unique feature of the MBA and, and why it's grown so much all around the world. Remember, China didn't offer a single MBA 20 years ago, today there are over hundreds of school business schools in China, is the idea of, of, of understanding the broad elements of running a business, both in terms of content and in terms of processes. And also the way we teach is very unusual. It's very participative, very interactive. It's conceptual, but also quite applied. So these executives are studying overwhelmingly part-time in this country, and they're taking that knowledge back to the company as they do the program. Now, I understand that you, you touched on China. I understand that one of your inventive, innovative uh, um, ideas was to come up with Mandarin with some of your courses. Why did you feel there was the need to do that? We, we've taught a bit of uh, uh, foreign languages, not too much, but we've always had a good uh, program with China. We visit our MBAs, in fact, there right now. They're in nine different countries around the world right now because we believe that expansion and that understanding globally is key. So we send them overseas, and China, India, Brazil, 
uh, Russia this week are important destinations, both to study those countries and how they're doing, but also to look at South Africa from the outside, as a, if you were, to make sure that we're benchmarking ourselves appropriately. Now, we're an emerging market, like some of the economies you just mentioned, uh, Brazil, Russia, and so on. Um, and also we have the great problem of not having enough entrepreneurs, and that's supposedly what we need to get the economy growing. How important is the MBA for emerging markets like South Africa? Critically important, because one, we do have a large business community that is pretty competitive. In fact, South Africa's business community as a proportion of the whole economy is one of the most global in the world. In fact, not many people talk about enough, I don't think. We're a highly competitive economy. But for the next generation, we need a whole new wave of entrepreneurs. Now, entrepreneurship is not something you can teach in a book. It's something that's an attitude and then a set of knowledge and then perhaps starting a business. A number of our MBAs do go on to start a business and we have a full-time MBA that's aimed at entrepreneurs. For six months they come and they finish for a year part-time. That's an attractive option if you want to start a business. Okay, and then a bit of invasion into where to next for you. Uh, we know that you're planning on staying at Gibbs as a professor, but uh, what are you going to do once you step down as dean? Well, I'm going to take a bit of a break um, and study again a bit because I've always been teaching, but I'd like to do some more in South Africa and elsewhere. So I'll do that for a while. But this country is so full of things to do that I don't think there's any shortage of people with a bit of energy to make a contribution. I hope to do that in some or other way. Thanks very much for your time, Professor. It's a great pleasure. Thank you. That was Professor Nick Benadel. He's the outgoing dean at Gibbs.